can you imagine this problem can be solved using the two pointer approach well it's a pretty big hint right so let's see what we can do about it hello friends welcome back to my channel first i will explain you the problem statement and we'll look at some sample test cases going forward we will start off with the brute force approach and then we will see with a clever trick how we can apply the two pointer approach after that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let us get started. The problem itself is very straightforward. You are given a non-negative integer c and then you have to determine if there are any two integers such that a square plus b square equals to c. You don't have to find those integers. You just need to tell me if such integers are present. If yes, return a true, else return a false. So, for example, if I look at my first test case, the value of c is 13. And I can get this number by 2 square plus of 3 square. That gives me 4 and 9 and that gives you a 13. So, you can achieve it, right? So, you simply return true as your answer, correct? Similarly, if you look at the second test case, c is equal to 3. Now, there does not exist any two integers upon which you add, you get the number 3. For example, 1 square plus 1 square, that will be 2. And 1 square plus 2 square, that ends up becoming 5. Correct? So, this value of c can never be possible. So, for the second test case, you need to return false as your answer. Similarly, you have some more test cases. When c equals to 5, you can do 1 square plus of 2 square and that becomes a 5. So, for the third test case also, you return true as your answer. And also, you might have some edge cases as well. For example, if you look at the value c is equal to 1. Now, the problem says that a and b, they should be two integers. 0 is also an integer. So, that is one thing that you need to take care about. So, basically what we can say is 1 square plus 0 square and that is equal to 1. Right? So, for the last test case also, you will return true as your answer. So, this is how the problem statement looks like. How do you go about solving it? To start building up a solution, let us take up a larger number. Over here, the value of c is 73. Now, you cannot apply the brute force technique. Right? Because in a brute force technique, you will try out all the different combinations. You will first do 0, 1, then 0, 2, then 0, 3, and then so on. When you are exhausted with 0, then you will do 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and then so on. You square all the numbers, add all the numbers, and then check every time. So, this ends up taking a lot of time. And certainly, we don't want to do it. Because yes, you will find the solution eventually, but you will waste so much of your time, correct? This is where some mathematics comes in. If you remember, I told in the beginning that this problem can be solved using the two-pointer approach. But where do you even place these two pointers? Where is the array? So try to think about it. When my number is 73 and you have to form this number using the square of two different integers, correct? So let us first find out the square root of 73. So square root of 73 will be equal to 8 point something, right? Because 9 square is 81 and 8 square is 64. So I can safely say that both of these two numbers, a and b, they will be greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to 9, correct? Because only then, when I will add and square them both, then I will get this number 73, correct? So, this is how you get your array. What it basically means is, I have this array in front of me. And the two integers, when squared and added up, they will give you 73, will exist in this particular array. If you cannot find them in this array, then those numbers do not exist, right? And this is where the two-pointer approach comes in. 
you will have your first pointer pointing at the first number and your second pointer pointing at the last number. And then what do you do? You will square both of these numbers and add them up. So over here I have 0 square plus of 8 square and that gives me 64. Notice that 73 is greater than 64, correct? Now I cannot have a value greater than 8 because this is my limit, right? But I can use a different smaller value, correct? So that is what I do. I will increment my left pointer. And now what do I get? This time I will get 1 square plus of 8 square. So 1 plus 64 and now I get 65. So once again you see 73 is greater than 65. I cannot go higher than 8 but I can increment this value. So what I will do is I will increment this left pointer by one step ahead. And now where do I land at? I land at 2 square plus of 8 square. That is 4 plus 64 and then 68. Once again 68 is smaller than 73 so I increment my pointer. Just wait this while and you will understand everything. So now what I will do? I will do 3 square plus of 8 square. So this time I get 9 plus 64. And if you add them both, this time you will end up getting 73. Correct? So you were able to determine that yes, if I have these two integers, then I can get this value 73. You add both of these numbers and then the total becomes greater than 73. Then it means that you will have to decrement your right pointer because now you have to choose a smaller number. This is very similar to the two sum approach where we are given an array and you have to find out okay upon adding which two numbers I will get my target sum, right? The only difference is that in this problem, you have to actually identify how do you create that array and where are you getting your pointers from. So based upon this approach, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a value of C that is passed in as an input parameter to the function. So going ahead with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we have some base case that if c is less than 0, then no matter which two integers you square, you will never get a positive value. So simply return a false. The next thing is actually assigning these two pointers. So the left pointer will be 0 because this is the minimum integer you can choose and the right pointer will be the square root of this number. But you will take the integer value. So when you have 73, you can only go up to the limit 8 because the square root will be 8 point something, right? So the right pointer now points at 8. This is how my basic setup is ready. In the next part, I will run a while loop. And this while loop runs until your left pointer is behind the right pointer. What do you do next? As soon as you enter the loop, you do a left square plus right square. And this is going to give you some value. So you get 0 square plus 8 square. And this gives me 64. Compare this value 64 with the sum. If they both are same, voila, you found the answer. Simply return a true. But right now, 64 is less than 73. What does that mean? You have to increment your left pointer. The left pointer goes ahead. 0 changes to 1. And then now this loop will run again. If for any reason, when you add these two numbers, the sum becomes greater than 73. That means you have to pick a smaller number. And that is where you do a right minus minus. So if you just exit the loop and don't find any combination, you simply get out and then you return a false. That means you did not find any pair which when squared and added gives you the number C. The time complexity of this solution is order root of under root of n because these are the maximum integers that you will have to traverse and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because you do not take any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope 
I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that the two pointer approach is a standard way how you can approach some problems on arrays. But with practice, you will identify when can you actually apply the two pointer approach. You have to look for certain cues. For example, when you are sorting an array, it gives you another dimension about what you know about the data set because the lowest element will be on one side and the highest element will be on the one side. So traversing both of them simultaneously, that can give you an answer. Similarly, sometimes you have to look for a maximum size. So this is where a two pointer approach comes in handy because you're starting one pointer from the beginning and one from the end. So just based upon more and more practice, you will be able to identify it on your own. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or what other problems have you seen that work on the two pointer approach? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. And it will also become a very nice collection of all such similar problems when you're reviewing this video sometime in the future. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And if you do love my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really motivates me. Stay tuned until the next video. Until then, see ya.